What up guys? Happy Thursday, it's Leanne here. I am gonna do a tutorial on female fitness myths, the lies the industry tells you. First, female fitness myth, you can tone your muscle. Now, toning your muscle does not exist. Your muscle, you're either building muscle, you're breaking down muscle, your muscle's getting stronger, or your muscle's getting weaker. Your muscle doesn't get toned. Toning, toning is a total marketing term, along with other like creative marketing copy that the industry tells you like with Pilates and you can have long and lean muscles and that's just not possible. Um, it's total BS. Fitness female myth number two that if you lift heavy weights, you're gonna look like the Incredible Hulk. Okay, maybe not that crazy, but that you're gonna get bigger, bulky and massive. Well, unless you take steroids, 99.9% .9 of the female population cannot horm hormonally increase their muscle size to get big or bulky. The the they cannot we cannot get as big as we fear we can. 99.9% .9 of us. Unless of course again, like you said, you take steroids. Um, even if you lift as heavy as a man, just physiologically impossible. Lifting heavy weights, however, is the best investment you can make as a female because it can improve your bone density, you can increase your metabolism, it's a total uh, weapon against anti-aging, especially after you're the age of 30, and basically lean muscle mass takes up less size, so it provides that tight, toned, and curvy look um, that you think you're after. But again, it's not toned, it's just muscle building. Female fitness myth number three, um, women need to do a lot of cardio to be fit. Again, first off, cardio is a good thing because it keeps your cardiovascular system in tip top shape. Um, but when you just rely solely on cardio, it is very much a detriment to overall body fat loss. Um, your body best responds with something called progressive overload, where you're constantly changing the types of the modalities that you're putting your body through in terms of not only cardio or aerobic exercise, but also um, strength training. So it's a lot easier when you get when you only rely on cardio, you max out, right? Because you can only cardio for so long, cardio for so many days a week, and then cardio for two day two a days so for so long for seven days a week. Whereas with strength training, it's a lot easier to manipulate the variables. Um, for example, you can increase the weight that you lift. You can increase the reps, the amount of times that you lift that weight, or you can change the tempo, the pace at which you lift and lower that weight. It also will cut down the on the total amount of time that you spend working out so you can get on and live your life. Female fitness myth number three, or on uh, number four, sorry. Women shouldn't take creatine. Now, creatine is one of the most um, studied supplements that have proven to be successful for both men and women. So the fact that women shouldn't take creatine, I mean, women already, we are, we both, men and women, already create creatine. Now, why should women supplement with creatine? Well, don't fear creatine because there's numerous studies out there that shows that creatine can assist you, especially women, in achieving your resistance training goals because it can help increase the amount of work that you're capable of doing in the gym. So it can give you the energy to lift heavier. It could also, lifting heavier means that overall you're burning more calories during your strength training session. And then, dependent upon how much you're eating, that can indirectly also lead to a greater amount of fat loss. So um, don't be afraid of creatine, it is a great supplement. Uh, and then the final female fitness myth number five is that women don't need as much protein. Well, yes, women don't need to eat as much protein as men for sure, but that's only because men and women have different calorie needs. Women who want to lose fat should have a higher protein consumption overall. Um, because higher protein keeps you full for longer, so that's very beneficial when you're trying to lose body fat. It also helps you to preserve your lean muscle um, while while keeping you full. So, if you have problems intake, you know, achieving your protein intake per day, then you can go ahead and supplement with something like a protein bar or protein shake. But it's not necessary. Like you don't need to need you don't need protein powder or protein bars in order to gain lean muscle mass. Most people use it as a form of convenience because they're just not able to either meal prep or buy enough whole food lean protein sources that they can eat in the day. Which leads to the next question I get a lot like, well, how much protein should I eat per day? Um, 
aim to shoot for 0.6 to 0.8 of grams per pound of body weight. 0.6 to 0.8 of grams a pound of body weight as a good start. So with that being said, um, if you have any questions about creatine or your protein requirements, message me here. Again, I'm gonna launch my second phase of Level Up in July. We start July 6, customized macros and programming for women over age 30 who are looking to build lean muscle mass. So this is not a diet program. This is not a, um, a specific body fat loss program. This is a lean muscle building program. So if you have any more questions, let me know. Have a great day, guys. Take care. Bye.